This is called a solar bag, and you'd be surprised to find out that this has 440 watts of solar panels inside of it, and it's very easy, compact to move around, but none of that matters if it doesn't produce the amount of power that it's supposed to, and that's why we're gonna test this today. This is the Optisolix Solar Bag 400. And just to make sure we have a total and fair comparison, I have this normal 400 watt residential solar panel on the patent pending Minuteman solar panel stands, so I can just set it up super easy. And we're gonna see how well the Optisolix bag does compared to a residential solar panel, because these are the most affordable option on the market. This solar panel with the stand is actually cheaper than if you buy this by itself, but the main difference is that this is very portable. But we're also going to compare it to these 200 watt bifacial solar panels that I bought from CalSun online, because these are small enough that you really could put them in the back of your truck or in your RV very easily and then set them up whenever you get to wherever you're trying to go. Now these would be a lot easier to set up if I had the Minuteman solar panel stands on it, but not everybody has those. I'm gonna show you what that's like. Just trying to lean these against my fence here and see if we can get good solar output, even though we don't have a very stable base. It's a pretty clear sunny day, but we do have a few chemtrails in the sky. What are you gonna do about it? But it just turned 11 o'clock, and so we've just entered the solar peak hours for the day at this time of year, meaning we're pretty much gonna have the same amount of light for the next four to five hours. So this is the perfect way to test these panels. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite portable power stations by Opez. This is not sponsored in any way, but this is the Mega 2, and this is a very powerful unit that has great expandability that's good for portability and home backup use. If you want a discount on this, it'll be in the links down below, as well as for the panels and the stands, all of that will be in the description down below. Some of the reasons why I like this unit so much is it's pretty portable, it's fairly lightweight, pretty much anybody can move it around, but it also uses a common Anderson power pole connection with an MC4 adapter. This is included with the unit. And then I'm gonna be using about a 50 foot 10 gauge solar cable to connect into this, so that way we can see exactly how much power is going into the battery. By the way, my name is Ben, and this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. I love testing stuff like this. If this is your second time on my channel, I would just subscribe if you're not. And if you appreciate the videos that I do, smash the like button. Let's get right into this test. One of the beauties and disadvantages of this panel is that it already includes MC4 connectors inside of it. I love that they're using standard connections. They include extra carabiners in here, so if you wanna hang this up on your car, side of your house, whatever, you have that option. But to get this thing open, it's only two clasps. Open it up. This is kind of the downside of it, is you have to open it up on the ground unless you're hanging it up on something. And since we're getting into the winter months, the sun's gonna be a little bit lower in the sky. So ideally, I want this around a 45 to 55 degree tilt, but I'm not gonna be able to do that in this situation. I'm just gonna be laying it flat on the ground. And then we'll compare this being tilted up to see how much more power we can get if it's hanging up. There's this big heavy duty zipper right down the middle, making it easier if you want to only carry half of this panel with you. You can split it in half and then have 220 watts of solar rather than 440. But what I'm actually gonna be doing is connecting these two panels in series. So I have the cables from panel one, cables from panel two. Series means that we're going from positive to negative or male, female. So now I've joined these two together and my voltage is gonna go up while my amps stay the same. So now I just need to get my solar cables connected onto here. One of the reasons why I like MC4 connectors so much is because it's using all male, female connections, there's actually no way to mess this up because inside this colored sheath, it's all the exact same copper wiring. I don't actually have to have the black to black. So if I had the other end of this cable right now, I could still connect the red to the black as long as I had the male connector going into the female connector. There's just no way to mess it up and that's what I like about it. One of the things that I'm noticing right off the bat is these two middle cells are what have the pouches that hold the connectors for the solar and it's creating this hump in the middle. And there's actually some very slight shadowing coming off of here, coming onto this other cell. Not a ton, but wanna make sure that none of the cells have any shadowing on them to get the best production here. Moment of truth, let's get this plugged in. Well, that's definitely not good at all. This is the highest that I've seen so far at 54. Oh, there it is, 56, 58. Oh, now it's increasing. 185 is the highest so far, and now we're dropping again. Now, when this is splayed out, we are sitting right about 
65 inches, so five foot five by 61 and a half, which is five feet, one and a half inches. This should do a lot better if I tilt it up. So I've got this plywood here. I'm just gonna lean it up against this. The sun is slightly off angle to it, but it shouldn't make a huge difference. Let's see if I can hook that there, perfect. And then get this one over here. All right, not bad at all. Looks like we're starting off low again. It's holding around 50 watts. There it goes, getting a little bit better. Finally just broke over 200 watts. And now we're almost about to break 300 watts. Can we do it? And yes, just over 300 and still climbing. Is 328 the highest that we can get out of this? Let's see, is it gonna do it? Oh, it just hit 339. That's the new high. Well, 339 seems to be the max that it's gonna be going up to. So if we check to see what that is in terms of efficiency, we do 339 divided by 440, and we get 77% efficiency, which is actually not bad, but it's also not amazing. It's pretty typical for solar panels to do around 80% of their rated output on any given day. So we're getting at least close to that, but definitely less than what we would like to see. And now time to test the 400 watt residential solar panel. This is not bifacial. I wanted this to be as fair as possible. So there are no cells on the back. This is just a Canadian solar 400 watt solar panel that I purchased. This panel is also very well used. I've had it for about two years using it in different testing conditions. So we're gonna see how it does. This stand, if I don't say so myself, it's pretty freaking amazing. And by the way, you can find the stand at poweredportablesolar.com, soon to be minutemansolar.com. Wow, we're at a surprising 237 watts right now. I actually expected a lot more from this panel. I have no idea why it is acting this way, but 241 is the highest we've gotten. And this has been sitting here for like five minutes. So doesn't seem like it's gonna be going much higher. This is absolutely blowing my mind that it's this low. Okay, I have another 400 watt panel just to be sure. We're gonna do some double testing on this because I'm not sure what's going on with this panel. So let's make sure that this is making more power. Okay, we're just shy of 300 watts on the other 400 watt solar panel. So this seems to be doing just fine because this is also a bifacial solar panel, which is gonna be getting a little bit more power than the non-bifacial 400 watt. This is absolutely surprising. Let's see how the two 200 watt panels do. I really do think that the Minuteman solar panel stand is such a game changer in all reality because the vast majority of people don't have an easy, affordable, portable stand to put their panels on. So they end up doing something just like this, what I'm trying to do, which is lean it up against a fence or a house or something like that. And this is just a, a dinky fence we put up for our dogs to keep them in a certain area. But regardless, I'm gonna make it work right now for our needs. I'm gonna do a series connection, positive and negative, and let's see how these do. Wow, 370 watts right now. This is actually really impressive for these two panels. Together, they're almost putting out 100% of their rated output power, which is not common for solar panels. So far, this has gotten up to 93% of the rated output and going higher, 377 we just saw, 378. So 378 seems to be the highest that we're getting on this so far with these two CalSun 200 watt bifacial solar panels. So for a folding solar panel, this is actually one of the best performing ones that I've ever tested, but it definitely has to be up at an angle and that's the downside to it. You wanna be able to hang this up right now in the winter months because the sun's a little bit lower, hanging it up works great. Probably during the summer months when the sun's up higher, then this being flat on the ground is probably pretty good. The only thing that I'd be really concerned about is the airflow behind this. Because this is gonna be flat on a surface, this is gonna start to build up heat and that might reduce how much power can put out because the hotter solar panels get, the less power they make. If you wanna know something cool, power is a technical term which means watts. But there are some other cool features about this that you definitely wanna know about. Inside of this larger compartment here, this is the adapter where the solar goes in but there's also a USB-C port as well as two USB-A, and then the left USB-A is rated to 15 watts. You get the exact same thing on the other solar panel, so I'm not sure why this is a smaller pouch here than this, because they both house the same cables as well as the same adapters. The only thing different about this is that it has the carabiners in it. I'm gonna go ahead and try this now. I'm gonna plug into the USB-C, connect my phone, and then fold this down. Just like that. It's hard to tell, but it's charging. And it's pretty fast. It says it's gonna do 30 minutes. It's basically gonna be doing 1% per minute. It says it has 30 minutes, it needs 27% more. Let's see how easy it is to put away. Yeah, not bad at all. And just put these clips back on. There's even a, a locking feature on these clips, which I've not seen before, that's interesting. It also has these shoulder straps, which you can use like a normal briefcase setup, but there's this center D-ring here. If you put it to there and then out to the side, do the same on the other. It actually turns this whole thing into a backpack. 
So it's pretty cool. You can carry this around super easy. Other than taking this like to my campsite or to my solar generator where I'm charging my batteries or something like that. But it's nice that it gives me the option to have my hands free, being able to carry 440 watts on my back. I do have to say that this Optisolix 400 watt bag really, really did surprise me for how compact it is. And it's only like 18 or 19 pounds altogether. This is a seriously good option for a solar blanket for a folding portable solar panel, as long as you can get it hung up during the winter months and then flat during the summer months should work great. I honestly can't believe that it outperformed these larger 400 watt solar panels and was almost on par with the CalSun 200 watt solar panels, but those are bifacial. They are gonna be getting a little bit extra boost from that. So I could definitely say if you need a portable solar panel that this is a good option. This seems to be putting out decent power for its rating. 76% output is less than I'd prefer to see, but I think it also makes up for that for how compact it is. So if you want to use this for camping, RVing, or just backup portable power, I think it's a good option. But this is definitely not something if you're trying to run a lot of power off-grid, such as a house or a full cabin, you'd want something more permanent. But if you want to be able to set up your solar panels without having to pull permits or do any paperwork, definitely check out this video right here because you'll see how you can use a portable solar panel stand in order to set up a huge array of solar panels very easily. And you can take it down anytime, nothing's permanent. Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next video.